Hey guys, um, finishing up bowl prep here, headed on the road tomorrow to, to Boise. I've been pleased with the guys. I thought we've had really, really good practices and, and the energy has been uh, phenomenal. I think they're excited about the trip, excited about the game and opportunity to play. And, uh, so I've been pleased with how that's looked. We've been juggling and recruiting at the same time. I think we've done a good job of addressing needs. A lot of guys we still can't talk about, but I think if you look and you kind of track the commitments that we've gotten, we've uh, attacked places that we feel like we need to get better at in the fall. We've, we've uh, I think, um, done a good job collectively across the board, our recruiting staff and then our, our uh, position coaches as well, uh, of being able to juggle a lot. Uh, at one time, and and it, it's starting to pay dividends, and, and commitments are rolling in, and and I think we're we're getting better every day. So we got to hold on to those guys and get them here. Uh, we've got to finish the process with this group and get them through the bowl game, and hopefully find a way to come out with a win and finish on a positive note. But real pleased with where things have trended here over the last month with uh, with I think the first step of guys choosing to stay, which was huge, and and. And we've, we've lost one guy out of our two deep um, off the entire roster, which is saying a lot considering what we went through a year ago. Continue to add commits from guys that fill gaps and, and they continue to get healthier and ready for bowl games. So I'm pleased with where we're headed. Now we just got to kind of finish that. What questions do you have? Jason Walker with Cash for the Daily. Uh, obviously a big part of this period, you, you talk about you know, getting healthy was uh, you know, really important. What, what's the, the status of the health of the team overall, you, you feel like? It's pretty good. I mean, we're, we're without a few guys. I think, I think everybody's kind of dealing with that at this point in the season. So we're, we're not going to have Coop for the game. Shoulder is still a, a, a legitimate concern and not ready to throw the ball full speed. And honestly, would be putting him in jeopardy. It would, it would not take much to set him back uh, a good bit. Uh, we're without uh, Anthony Switzer with a broken bone in his hand. Avante Dickerson had surgery a week or two ago, and he's out. Brock Lane is out. Uh, beyond that, I, I would say that that we're you know we're up front on both fronts where we've really struggled the last month of the season. We're healthier, and guys should be able to step back in and play. Uh, so I, I would say, I mean, we're in no worse shape than anybody else at this point in the year. And considering we haven't had you know half of our two deep in the portal, which we've seen across the country at a lot of places. Uh, I'd say, you know, just in terms of bodies available and, and health of the team, we're, we're in a pretty good place going into this game. Anderson, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. I just wanted to ask you, uh, how difficult is the balance between preparing for a bowl game and, and preparing for that early signing period? And then second part of the question is about what percentage of your uh, commits are you expecting to sign on Wednesday? Uh you know, in terms of signing on Wednesday, a handful obviously can't sign a letter of intent. Do you know the transfers can't can't sign a letter of intent? They'll sign a grant and aid, and, and so we'll we'll handle that. But you know, those are guys that we really—that's a non-traditional recruiting cycle. Um, we would anticipate all of the commits, high school and junior college commits that we have at this point, to sign on Wednesday. We, we don't. We're not in the process. Are really in the habit of of having to commit wait till February. That that kind of indicates he's not really committed, if that makes sense. So, uh, if you've seen a commit to this point, if they're a Power Five or, or a four year transfer, then we would be signing a grant and aid, uh, and obviously wouldn't be talking about those guys until they've been admitted into school and and are on their way here. But the guys that are both at high school and junior colleges, we would anticipate all those guys signing a letter of intent on on Wednesday and being released to the public and, and being here in January, or if need be, obviously in the summer. Um, I don't know exactly what that number is uh, at this point to be truthful, but um, we are still in the process of filling spots. We've had some some guys at the bottom half of the roster, guys that weren't playing very much, I've seen a handful of those guys put their name in the portal here over the last couple of weeks. We're in the process of trying to find those guys' homes, most of which have received offers at the one double A and division two levels already. Uh, so, so we are still currently filling some of those spots or we'll continue to do that through, uh, even through the cycle in the spring. In terms of how hard it is to juggle, uh, it, it's extremely difficult. That's a lot. We've been on the road, uh, home visits. We've had guys on campus almost every day. 
uh, that along with trying to prepare for a game, an early game, uh, it, it's a lot. And I think it, it stresses everybody a, a good bit and everybody's got to do their jobs extremely well. Uh, I think our recruiting staff, uh, Kevin Goodwin and his crew have done a phenomenal job of being able to take a lot of the heavy lifting off of the position coaches uh, in terms of the logistics and schedules for for visits and all the all the things that kind of go with and around recruiting, uh, they've done a great job, uh, and it's it's allowed us to I think be more freed up to do what we need to do uh, on on the field. Al Lewis from KBNU. Uh, it looked like in the New Mexico game, the second half especially, you kind of changed the offense with Levi. So now, do you really change the offense the way he has different weapons than maybe some of the other guys have? Well, I think a lot of the second half had to do with how the weather was changing the game, too, if that makes sense. The temperature dropped probably 20 degrees during that game, and the wind picked up considerably. Uh, and, and we felt like it dictated a lot of what we wanted to do. It wasn't a huge factor early. It became more and more a factor as the game progressed. Uh, I don't really want to have to just lean on him to run the ball all day. Now, clearly, he's a great runner, and he does add a component to the game that, that other guys don't. But we want to be balanced, and we had every intention of being balanced in that particular game. But as the game changed, as the weather changed, it, it dictated a lot of what we could and could not do. Um, I feel like that our old line should be healthier, and they are, and we should have a better look up front than we had over the last few games of the season. And and with the exception of missing Micah Davis, we're we're healthy, you know, outside, and other guys have stepped in and done a really good job too. So I would like to think that we can be very balanced, still play fast, and make them defend the whole field, uh, and and not be one dimensional at any at any phase of what we're trying to do offensively. A follow-up to that, then, uh, looking at Georgia State's numbers, they have been a better rushing defensive team than pass defensive team as far as what they've given up. They did lose their leading tackler yes. uh, to the portal. So what do you think about them as far as their defense against their offense? Well, I've always just felt like Sean does a great job being physical. His teams play physical football. And, and regardless of guys in the portal or not, just assume they're going to step up and, and be very difficult – to run the ball against. We we have to protect uh, to throw and catch well, and we've struggled at, at times during the last few weeks of the season, and they have the ability to be dynamic off the edge. Uh, we can't just uh, assume, though, I think, uh, that, that we can't run the ball and we have to take the approach like we have all year. It may be tough early with the way they're built and, and how they, I think, how they prepare their team, that we have to be patient and consistently continue to try to run the ball. I do think Levi's ability to run the ball makes that more difficult to shut down the run game. It's a set of legs that's hard to defend. I'd like to think that'll be a problem for them. Balance is still going to be the key. It does start with running the ball and stopping the run on both sides. We know that. They know that. And it's something they're really good at doing. Uh, but but uh, balance, I think, is really, really important for us offensively. Tempo and balance, those two things uh, are, are going to be big in terms of us being effective offensively. Mason Walker again, Cash Money Daily. Um, how much, you know, with, with some of Georgia State's portal losses, does that change you, you know, how you're scouting their rushing attack? They obviously lost a lot of their running backs, but they still have a really good runner at quarterback. Just how do you try and, and approach game planning for this team with all those losses, you know, taken into account? Yeah, I don't – we haven't got caught up in that a whole lot. We know the quarterback is a really good player. Uh, we we obviously looked at the the roster, but uh, I think if you get too caught up in that, instead of just kind of playing the game, I think if with a very balanced approach, very thoughtful approach to being sound and, and playing uh, good sound football, I, I think if you start thinking about well who's there and who's not, who'd they lose, you can always be surprised when a guy steps in and he has a huge day and is bigger or better than maybe what uh, what they lost. I just always assume they're going to play their best, take the approach to play sound football, and, and not take anything for granted. Um, we have a tremendous amount of respect for the quarterback and what he's capable of doing, throwing and pass, uh, running the ball. They're very balanced. Their RPO game puts you in, in very stressed situations. 
Uh, Sean's offenses and defenses have always been physical up front. They've run the ball well, even with guys being in the portal. I, I just always assume that the next guy is going to step in and play his best game. And, and so we just want to be sound. We want to play hard and be sound and, and hope that um, that our matchups are in our favor. And if they lose a guy here to the portal, here or there, the portal that, that makes it difficult for them, then it's a it's a benefit for us that – that, but we can't plan that way. We can't assume anything or plan that way, in my opinion. Hey, Coach Anderson, Jason Turner again. No biggie if you can't answer this, but uh, uh, what kind of surgery did Avante have? And uh, no, no, Micah Davis, he's, he's still injured. He won't be playing on Saturday. Yeah, Mike is out, had foot surgery. He'll be fine, but he's not going to be back for this game. He'll be fine mid-spring, late spring. Avante Dickerson played through a shoulder injury most of the year. Uh, it was going to have to be cleaned up and finally just kind of got to a point where it needed to be cleaned up now. So he had shoulder surgery. Uh, Brock's dealing with cleaned up, you know, surgery on his ankle. That that thing's been bothering him for a long, long time and, and had an knee injury in that last game that was going to keep him out regardless. So we had his – went ahead and had his ankle cleaned up. Um, I think that's all of them, Jason. There may be another couple dudes that, that have bumps and bruises that are, that are getting cleaned up for the most part. Um, I think those are the ones that the major ones that we're going to keep guys out, with the exception of Switz, who didn't need surgery, but the, there is a broken bone in that hand that's not really stable enough to play on. Yeah, Jason Walker, I'll ask one more. You talk about the physicality of Georgia State, and that's something where the times you guys would match the physicality of other teams, the times you struggle with that. How do you feel like that matchup in the trenches, you know, looking at it right now, how do you feel like that matchup? kind of looks right now. Well, I'm hoping – I mean, I'm hoping this is a group that we can match up with well. You know, we we feel like we play in one of the most physical leagues in the country, uh, especially at this level, the group of five. Uh, you know, I, I'm coming from the Sun Belt. I think speed and twitch is something that you see there. It, I think they exceed our league in speed and twitch. I think our, our size and power in this league uh, is definitely an advantage within the Mountain West. I'd like to think that just those matchups are going to look a little bit more like us. We always struggle in our league to just the sheer power and size of the league. It's hard to recruit uh, to match that, what some of these teams in our league have. We try really hard to do that. At times, we're quicker and, and have more speed and space. So in this particular matchup, I think it favors us. We look a lot more like them. They look more like us as compared to Boise and, and Fresno and and some of the other teams in our league. So that's that's always just been my take, having been in that league for seven years, um, and just where I think the strengths of both leagues are. Well, Dal Lewis, another one. Um, you, when you at the end of the year, your psyche, you look at seven and six compared to six and seven. It means a whole lot more to be seven and six uh, to win this game. You've only felt like you kind of won the re recruiting or the off season a little bit, and that's a win, but it doesn't count standing. How big is this game to win to be 7-6? Yeah, it's big. It does. You're right. There's a – you win the last game you play. It just carries over to the offseason and just the, the momentum and energy that goes with that. I mean, it's still one game. And, and, and at the end of the day, you know, uh, we're not playing for some national title or conference title, but but we're – it's our last game for our seniors. It, it I think it does – it's the first game of next season in a lot of ways because of the energy that you carry – into the off season, and, and you're right. A winning season, as compared to a sub 500 season, is a lot for everybody. Uh, I've told our guys real clearly: we want to enjoy the bowl events. We want to have a blast this week. We want to celebrate the week and the season. But ultimately, we want to find a way to win the game, and that's that is all we've talked about. What does it take to win? Be the team that's that's hungry on game day to find a way to get the win. And, and I'm expecting that's what our guys are going to do. Uh, kind of related to record. I mean, you guys are both six and six, uh, but kind of got there in different ways. You guys are back and forth in wins and losses. They started like six and one, lost yeah. five straight. I like that might impact the either team's mentality, just the fact that they're kind of different paths to, to getting to this point. I mean, it could. Uh, it you know, it's a it's a game of momentum, and when energy gets going in the right direction, uh, I think it builds and builds. And you know, I like the way our guys finished. Uh, I, I you know, I, I'm sure they would have. They would have loved to, to continue to stay on that roll at six and one. I think that's the best record in, in school history there. And, and that says a lot about what Sean's done 
to be able to put themselves in that position. You never know what causes a, a, a season to, to get off track. Could have been injuries, could have been a million things. For us, we struggled early because of the schedule and, and just where we were in terms of being experienced. And we're a better team now than I think the season started. Um, but, but you know, you, you got to take each season as it comes. Uh, it could – it could have a big factor in this game. I, I've always felt like bowl games were who wants to be there, who's excited to be there. I can only speak for our group. I know they are excited about the game and, and proud of how we finished and battled, even though it was tough all season. Proud, I think, about guys' willingness and commitment to come back and excited about the future. So I'm hoping all that plays into this game in a way that that benefits us and and ultimately find you know find a way to win. Anything else, guys? Merry Christmas, guys. Uh, Jason Walker with Cash Valley Daily. I guess start with you know it being your last game. What are the, the feelings and emotion like when you're preparing for you know last game of your college career? Um, for me, it's honestly the same thing, but there are some obviously emotions at the end towards when you see the triple zero. So, but. Uh, prepare is still the same. Still want to go out there and compete and win. Well, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. You you really had a good game last year when you went to Boise on the road that regular season finale. So uh, maybe how much of a kind of an extra special feel is it for you that your last game is on a turf that you really excelled uh, during your time at Utah State? Um, it's a great feeling, honestly. I honestly want to capitalize on that and do even better because that was probably like my best uh, game last year. That was my first like ever to do good there. So I was finally getting comfortable with the offense and everything. So now that I'm more comfortable with everything and understand everything more, I'm going to do much better there. Carl Al Lewis from KBNU. Just evaluate the Utah State program since you've been here now, where you feel it when you came and where you feel it is now. <laughs> What do you think towards the future for us? Oh, they're, they're nothing but growing right now. All I see is on commitments coming in, some great ones, actually. So Jalen Roy is going to do his job next year. I already know that. And it's going to be here on up for them. I wish it could be another year, but too bad I can't. Eric Franson with 106.9 The Fan. What's the, the, the practice has been like uh, this uh, recently <clears throat> that um, – Sometimes we hear coaches say this is an opportunity to uh, prep more of the younger players, but it's also an opportunity to reward the senior players going to a bowl game. But what, what have the practices been like so far leading up to uh, this week? Um, it's honestly been the same around. We kind of had a little um, off time to get our bodies back, and we got back into running about like for a week or so. And then we had practice regularly, and then um, got some new guys in there that because of the transfer portal. So help step up and stuff like that. So it's nothing been different with practice. Well, it looks like for Georgia State, some of their better players are secondary players on the defense. What do you see of them, how they're going to play against you? What's your scouting report against them? Um, they're physical. They lost their, pretty sure their star receiver and running back. I think some, some DBs to that too, but we don't treat anyone lightly at, at all. So got to go out and compete. The one guy has four interceptions in the secondary corner. What, what do you see of their secondary as you study them? Um, they're long and physical, and they run very well. Just got to play with the technique. What Coach Seth teaches us throughout the week. Trust that. Uh, Jason Walker again. Just talk about this, this offense with Levi Williams. You guys have obviously played with you know, a bunch of different quarterbacks throughout the year because of health and whatnot. What's the offense like when, when Levi's there with what he adds and obviously with his legs, but also just what's he like as a passer as well, leading this offense? Um, I see no difference in quarterbacks. They all do the same exact uh, thing. Each, each one has their own specialty, but Levi just, as you see in New Mexico, he couldn't do anything, honestly. But it's great to have him back there, for, honestly, for his last game too as well. So he's got to go back there and uh, support him, have his back. And Terrell, one more for me, just, uh, you know, this is at Boise State. It's kind of what used to be known as hostile territory in the regular season. But 
this is an opportunity for your uh, you know, Aggie fans to come and, and watch you. What would it mean for you and your teammates to have a good crowd of uh, Aggie fans there for the bowl game? It's always everything to us having home field advantage, but seeing obviously Aggie Nation on the side and the USU herd, it'd be amazing because they're coming from far distance. So it's going to be great for us in advantage at fans wise. Anything else for Terrell? Terrell, it's uh, Brian Priest, KSLSports.com. I was just wondering if, you know, with this being your last game with Utah State, have you allowed your your mind to wander and think about what the what the future of football is for you? <clears throat> no, I'm just focused on this game right now and do what I can do to help my team win. And just honestly, like the whole practice situation, just make sure the details are right and my technique's right when I go out there. And that's about it. Just focus on what's what's right now. Uh, Jason Walker with Cash Valley Daily. Uh, just kind of starting with with the obviously long time here at Utah State. Uh, this can be your last game. Just looking back, like what do you feel like your legacy has been? And then uh, also just you know, talk about the, the emotions of this being your last game after you know, such a long time here. Um, you know, I'm just very grateful that I get to play my last game. Um, battle through injuries, uh, especially this season, but i um, just grateful that I'm healthy and I'm able to play my last game as an Aggie. Um, it's, it's, I, I don't know, I haven't really thought about it too much. Um, I'm just, I'm just excited to go out there and play with, with my boys one more time. It's uh, represent Utah State. I've been here for a while and um, I'm just grateful that I've been here this whole time and experienced what I've experienced. Play Al Lewis from KVNU. What does it mean to get selected for a Hula Bowl, even though it's not Hawaii? It used to be all the time. But what, yeah. what does that mean to you to be an Aggie to represent us there? It's an honor, uh, honestly. You know, um, yeah, like you said, I've always heard of the Hula Bowl. I used to go watch it um, growing up. Um, but sadly, because of everything that's going on in Hawaii, they had to move it to Orlando. But it's still, you know, it's somewhere warm. <laughs> it's somewhere warm to play. So I'm very grateful and I'm honored for this opportunity to, like you said, um, represent Utah State, represent my family, and, you know, represent the Polynesian culture as well. It's just another opportunity for me to go out there and uh, show my worth and it helps me get one step closer to um, getting closer to playing in the NFL, living out my dream. Hey, I'll ask you another one. Georgia State had one of the best running backs in the country, yeah. and he decided to go yeah. in the portal, so he's not there. Mm -hmm. But do you feel like, looking at it, it's a system that can be a good running attack do you guys have to defend? I mean, the guy who was picking, backing him up rest for a thousand on another school before he was there. So what do you feel about going against their running attack? Um, you know, I respect their running attack a lot. They're they're a tough group of guys. Um, yeah, we haven't got to watch too much film of the second string running back because of how much carries their the guy that was in the transfer portal got. But you know, just watching their scheme, how they operate the offense, it's it's really quick. Honestly, it's it's the closest to our offense in terms of their fast tempo. So you know, we've been preparing for that, making sure that we're in the best shape possible to um, to kind of to compete against that fast tempo offense. And it's going to be exciting to see, exciting to, to play against a team from the Sun Belt. Um, yeah, excited for this opportunity. Is the quarterback, he looks like he's a real threat. In yes. Running, throwing, all that kind yes. of stuff. Is he about as dynamic as anybody you play? Um, most definitely, you know, he kind of reminds me of a tailing green type guy. Uh, he's a senior. I know this is his last game as well, representing or playing for his school, representing his school. So I know he's going to give it his all. So we're, we're prepared to see his very best, you know, especially because, um, he, he, he doesn't have some of the, his main targets or some other, um, dynamic players on offense. I can, I can really expect for him to, you know, carry that load. Cause now that, that running back left, he's the leading rusher. And I think he had almost 600 yards, hundreds something carries, you know, so we're expecting his very best. Oh, hey, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. You're going to be facing a pretty green offensive line. They lost three guys, a couple to the portal, a guy to an injury, including the first team all Sun Belt selection. So, uh, how big of an opportunity is this for the defensive line to to potentially gain some momentum heading into the off season? Yeah, it's very important. You know, we're aware of that, but at the same time, we always got to respect our opponents. Um, 
you know, I've been in that situation of being a backup. And I remember once you, once I got my opportunity, how, how hungry I was to make the most of it. So, you know, a lot of these guys probably going to have a chip on their shoulder and, and trying to prove that, you know, just because they haven't got that many reps that they've been preparing for that moment. So, you know, it's a big thing for us to, to go out there and play hard and, you know, kind of out tough and out physical them as much as we can. You know, we've had a great couple of weeks to recover our body and to, to um, get back into the swing of things, get, get faster, get stronger. And um, so, yeah, so that's what we plan on doing. Um, we have to make the most of this opportunity and um, try and be as productive as we can. Eric Franson with 106.9 The Fan. This week, uh, in this whole role preparation, it's a, it's a great celebration for the seniors and for the team, but it's also an opportunity to build on the future for the younger yes. and the underclassmen. Mm -hmm. What have you observed during this uh, this last week in, in getting ready for the bowl and in looking for the future for the, the football program? Honest, the honestly, I've seen a lot of fire. You know, um, We got like a little week off right after New Mexico and in the, the past two weeks before before that we we're you know running and lifting and doing PRPs play run practices and you can definitely see that there's a fire you know coach Jackson coach a all the coaches that have been here they've been emphasizing you know this is this is you know the last game of the season but this is the first game of next season you know and I can see that a lot you know I see a lot of the boys especially on the defensive side putting in the extra work you know Ike um, all the DBs they're they're up on weekends in the morning, in the indoors, you know, per perfecting their craft, you know, all the young defense alignment, getting extra lifts in and stuff like that. You know, it's just good to see that, um, you know, build upon what we did this year. I, I really have a lot of confidence for the, the team next year. I'm really excited to, to follow them and see how well they do.